art of prayer and we will read chapter 11 of the book of the book of Luke from verse 1 says right there the Bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he seized one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah, the Bible says after he came from prayer and the disciples saw him praying and then they desired that he teaches them how to pray. They always watch him pray. They always see him labor in prayer prayer for hours and this time round they said teach us to to pray you know this is a desire that uh, was in, born in them it is what he deposited in them the truth of the matter is unless you desire to pray you will not learn prayer I repeat this Unless you desire to pray, you will not pray. No wonder they were all sleeping every time he takes them to go and pray. They were always sleeping. They do not even see the need to pray. And this problem is in every church today. That people don't see any need to pray. Even after being in church for so many years, I think it is why we need to be intentional when we come to church. I'm saying it is the reason as to why we have to be very intentional. If you cannot desire to pray, uh, then something is wrong somewhere. They watched him until they desired to and they say, teach us to teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. When somebody begins saying, teach me, something has already happened in the lives of that person. Uh, and, and this is the way to go now. This is the way to go. Do you have the, the desire to pray <laughs> or are you pushed into prayer are you forced to come and pray you know it is very easy for you to to follow the programs of the church when the program is not your desire and you can just come simply because uh, the program is planned and it is put in place. But the truth is it might be a burden to you. 
might be a burden to you. Uh, I am just thinking and this is what we need to pray our life out of. Let me repeat this. This is what, need, what we need to pray our life out of. A place where prayer becomes a burden to you and you don't even have a desire in your heart to pray. You will not pray if you have not really prayed to pray. Yeah? You will not pray if you have never shown interest or a desire to learn how to how to pray. And what is prayer? When somebody desires to pray, someone has decided to meet God. You know, God is not a physical being that you just meet. He's not just a physical being that you can meet him any day while walking somewhere. There is chances of people going to hell being born in church because they never connected with with God never they have a very shallow understanding about God but they've been in church all through their chances their chances that somebody might not have any effect of God in their lives. But they have been in church for hours, for years. Yeah, for years. What I see when I look at these people who are telling Jesus to, to help them pray, uh, I think they have decided, they have realized they, they don't have even the map on how to pray. It's like when they come to prayer, network in potea. They don't even know where to begin from, how to go about these things. And uh, yes, and uh, they saw their need. Hmm? They saw their their inadequacy. Their inadequacy. Their insufficiency their lack of ability I think they also desired God they desired to be like God and thank God they have a teacher who can teach them about prayer mm -hmm. Jesus goes and spends hours in the presence of God even if he goes with them, they can't pray. Uh, as I was saying last week. Was it last week or the other week? I was saying that uh, uh, can you take some time and pray alone where there is no prayer meeting like this? Can you do that? Can you do a lot? Go and pray alone in your house, wherever you are. Do you normally do it? And I'm not talking about this prayer where you you are in a hurry and then you speak some few words and disappear out of the house. I'm not talking about that the prayer that they are asking him to teach them is not how to pray for food that one you know you must you learn even before somebody teaches you because you want to eat you you want a job you even know how to pray and you don't even stay longer in prayer those are not really prayers what do I call that one how can we name that one it's like you want something you earned. If you want something from somebody, you know how to ask. Yeah, give me this. You are very specific. You don't even take more time. But this prayer we are talking about is a prayer where you are not at the center of it. God is. 
And, and that's why you see if the way Jesus is teaching them how to pray, this one is not about what they want from God. This prayer is about what God wants of them. How do you think God will ask you to pray if he teaches you to pray? And all of us, we have the we are conscious of our need and we know how to pray for one. Father, I don't have this. Give me. I have done wrong. Forgive me. I think those, those prayers we normally make. Naturally, when needs arises, you simply say, even in our DBSs, the kind of uh, request we bring is majorly what to get from God. But this is different. This is very different. This is different. You are just coming before God and you want to know how God wants you to pray and you have, you, have given, you have given yourself to him so that he leads you on how to, to pray. Yeah. This is his way of prayer. Not our way of prayer. Our way of prayer is to get material things from God. And that's why after you get you this done, you forget about it. If there is a desire to to pray the way God expects us to pray. An hour is even too small for us. Yeah? We will not get tired of praying. So what I'm trying to say is you have to come to the end of yourself. You have to come to the end. When I talk about end of yourself, in other words, you have to stop approaching prayer from your own personal way of looking at prayer. And you have to... How long do you spend with your friends if you begin talking? Do you have friends? How long do you normally speak to your friends? Is there a hurry when you people are talking? Is there a hurry? Hmm? My friend, I have only two minutes. Talk very fast. Do you say that? But when you come to pray, you're like, Lord, when is this time ending? Angalia <laughs> too. Ikeesha inaisha zangapi. I pray as he leo ni pewa tu nafasi ya kulala. Somebody is... When you, when you have a friend... You can even talk the whole day, even if you're talking nothing. You're just commenting about nothing, you know, nothing. <laughs> you're commenting about everything that is coming. I think you know what I mean. The kind of prayer they are asking God to teach them is this kind of prayer. Because Jesus is spending hours with the Father. But they're struggling. They're struggling. This touch with God they don't have like Jesus has. They don't have. How long do you, how, how long do you think Jesus prays when he prays? Just guessing. How long does he pray? One hour? Yeah? How long does he pray? Dan is speaking. More than an hour. I don't think he even prays for three hours. He prays for more. I wonder when he comes, you go with him to pray, you go and sleep as he prays. Kama tu mtoto, amenda na mama mahali. Sasa tu amechoka na tenye mama anafanya, anajiwekele tu pali. Nanza kulala. That is how. I wanted you to see from where this thing is coming from. They didn't just tell him, teach us to pray. Another question I have. Have you ever asked God to teach you to pray? Have you, have you, in any, any day, did you, have you ever said, God teach me, I want to pray? Has it ever happened? I want to see our genuine year. Somebody, from the day you began coming to church, I don't know how many years it is. Is there any day in your life you told God, teach me to pray?
any day. No wonder we struggle to pray. <laughs> no wonder we struggle to pray. No wonder. No wonder we struggle. A prayer, now the prayer that we make is we only come because now it is a, a routine. Can I use that word? We just come because it is a routine. Because we have just to come. You know, that is why we just come. And if pastor will allow me to, right now, I will be sleeping, you know. If I'm allowed. In other words, there is, there is, uh, there is no touch with God. It is, and, and it is dangerous to pray from that place. Thank God you are coming in the morning. I'm saying thank God we are coming in the, in the morning. Thank God for the desire for, the, for even being present here. But there is more than being present when it comes to prayer. There has to be some deep connection from your inside that links you to God. Yeah. That links you to God. Deep something. Which you can even choose to stay a whole day just concentrating on him. And you forget about people and your environment. Like Jesus. That is the prayer I want to speak about this week. I want to come and sit before you. I want to just have some time with you. I want my mind to be not going everywhere. This week, as we are talking, I want you to pray that God will deliver you from your phones. Amen. Sometimes you are praying, unakimbia inje, unangea, unarudi. Sometimes unaka pali, unangalia. I think we need to put our phones somewhere when we begin praying. What do you think? The more you, the way you give attention to your phone, you don't give to who? To God. Yes. The way you give, I wonder if you walk out of a prayer session and you go and speak on phone. You must be, must have a problem. Mungu kidogo kuna mtu anapiga simu. Watch and Do you think God will sit there and wait for you? Yeah. Uh, if there is something that causes a lot of distraction for us not to listen to God or pray is fun. It's fun. Nisimu. Sindio. Is that true? Yes. It's fun. May your phone never have what distracts you from God. And this prayer, this is I'm speaking very simply but it's a reality. May nobody distract you from God. You know? You want to pray but then you feel like somebody is calling or somebody is what? Somebody is and now you are relationship with God is interrupted by somebody calling by in other words God is not number one it is one thing to appear in church it's another thing to make God number one it is good we learn early this we learn this thing early when God becomes the center of your life so that everything you do is dependent on him you see, why we must desire to encounter God? It is only when you meet him that your life changes. The encounters you read in the Bible, like what I was reading yesterday morning here, that he comes and visits Gideon and he tells him, you are a mighty man of God appeared to him. I was reading here about Abraham. God appeared to him. He became mighty. I read about Isaac, God appeared to him. He became mighty. Huh? 
that becomes the effect of prayer. God appeared to Moses. He was running from Pharaoh. Now he can stand before Pharaoh. He told him, I will make you God to who? To Pharaoh. So something changes in us when we choose to meet God. Something changes in us. And uh, that kind of prayer, it is, you know, Jesus, Peter, Peter got a revelation of who Jesus is. You people get saved because something, some truth was deposited in you about who God is. You understood something. But it is not enough to remain there. It is not enough. It is not enough to remain there. If there is one thing that this church has to teach you, it is this kind of prayer I'm talking about. So that even if you go from here, you can still go and pray. Eh? So he says, teach us. They said, teach us to pray. Because they see the deeper relationship they have with God. Deeper relationship. Jesus is always consistent when it comes to prayer. Consistent. A great while before the day, he woke up and went on the mountain to do what? To pray. A great while before the day. A great while. That should be around two in the night. One. Might be twenty. Some people said it's three. Whatever time. A great while. So that in the day God has to manifest himself in his life. He prays for hours when the disciples were sleeping. And then when they walk together during the day, he manifests things that they cannot. Whatever they call problem, he does not call it problem. He solves everything. So they are always wondering, why is the blind getting healed? Why is the lame walking? Why is the, the deaf hearing? Why is he removing demons out of people? At some point they try to remove demons out of somebody. And they couldn't. And then he asked them a question. Why didn't we do it? Chapter 17 of Matthew and chapter 9 of the book of Mark. He told them, this type cannot go when you are eating food every day. <laughs> when you are eating every day, you can't remove demon out of somebody. He said, this one cannot come except by prayer and fasting. So meaning, so if you look at Jesus, there's a way he teaches them. This type does not come out unless you pray and, and fast. In other words, their fasting has to be part of your life every day of your life. Fasting has to be part of your, of your life. You might choose to do fasting weekly. In a season like right now, when we are having 40 days, I am fasting every day. I only take supper. Every day. I have decided this time round, no jokes. Amen. And we can't see God unless we choose. Will I die by eating only supper? I will not die. But somebody has to decide. Somebody has to decide. Somebody has to decide. Somebody has to decide that it is my benefit. It is for my benefit when I choose to stay. So, we need to pray that God will teach us to, to pray. You know, when you say, teach me to pray, it also means you are ready to learn. You are ready to pay any cost. One of the reasons as to why many of us don't 
want to pay any cost in growing spiritually is because we don't have desire. We have never asked. We have never asked. Whatever you didn't ask, you will not have it. And uh, there are chances we can sit in the church and waste time being in church for like 10, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, and you never even met the God you're talking about. Yeah, in this season of prayer, may God turn our lives around. That's my prayer. In this season, eh, can you say, may I not be in the church when I don't even know the God I'm worshiping? That, that should be the kind of talk we should be talking. Yeah, May I not be in the church if I don't understand the God I am. Yes. You need to pray, God, as I come to your house, make me what your word says. So I'm talking about the way God wants us to pray. So as I finish with some few words, if you look here, I will, I will continue talking about this. Then he told them how to pray, our Father which is in heaven. They never called God Father in that time. But he says, this is how we pray now. Say our Father. Then he says, hallowed be your name. In other words, the first thing you do, you worship God before you when you come before him. That is what you do. You see why I ask us to be worshiping here? <laughs> and all our worshipers are sleeping. The first thing you do before prayer is to do what? To worship. And then he says what? Uh, your kingdom come. What does it mean when kingdom comes? I will to explain it at length as we progress. When kingdom comes, it means it means that uh, it is God who is going to be revealed in your, in your, in your environment. God, your kingdom, king in a domain. The king is God. So let you be seen in my environment. That is what it means. Your will be done. Not what I feel or think, but what you desire. Let that one happen. It's very different from the way we pray. The first time you just arrive, you are telling God every problem you have. Every need you have. <laughs> You're not even beginning with worship and all these things. Yeah? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. After you have prayed about his kingdom to come and all these things, is when now you begin praying for yourself. Forgive our sins. Give us what to eat. And then may yours is the kingdom and then you finish the prayers God's way of praying may this become our way of prayer in Jesus name even when you pray as a person alone somewhere this should be the, the, the way this should be the way but I'm talking about if you don't desire to pray, it is very uh, it's 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 the chances you will never meet God. You'll only hear about God. You will just hear about God. I was listening to two men of God. One of them said until God appears. In fact, so many of them. Nigerians. Nigerians, they want real thing. Not just anything. So there's one called Aromel. So he says, he decided to meet God. And he says, he, and then he decided to pray at least more than three times per day. After praying for, he said, he's going to pray, to, he was going to pray for 240 days. How many months are those? Eight says, I am going to pray three times every, every day for the next 240 days. He began in January. When he arrived in, in August, it is like God is nowhere. So one evening, he says, it was 187 days. God just arrived. He says, it seems you are trying to pray. <laughs> God told him, 
it seems you are doing what? <laughs> you are trying. At least you are catching my attention. You know, I look at that thing and I'm like, wow. It seems you are trying to pray. And then it's doing with a lot of fasting and prayer. Fasting. Until he began, you can't hear the voice of God speaking to you if you're not a type that fasts daily. You'll only have your, your flesh speaks to you. Another one decided to fast and pray. Solomon. He met God when he was at 186 days. After praying consistently, 186 days is how many months are those? Six months. Huh? He has done it. He says, until I meet God. Today you look at Josh Johnson Suleiman. He's going everywhere. The other day I was in, is it in Germany or Japan. He's preaching everywhere. Every, and I'm like, have we begun praying? I felt like we have not even begun. You see? We have not begun. We have not begun. So I want us to to learn this art this week. And I am praying that the grace to pray will come on us. In Jesus' name. Yes, I think that is enough for now.